The Cineware effect is an integral part of the whole Cinema 4D light workflow. It is the interface that resides between the C4D file and the comp and the CineRender Cinema 4D rendering engine. It has multiple properties, some of which may be kind of mind-numbing the first time you take a look at them, but it's important to understand how they work. So to see how the Cineware effect works, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and go on down to Cineware CineRender. We're going to work with two Cinema 4D files here and four comps. Before we do anything, though, I want you to open up Cinema 4D Lite. So to do that, select this Balloon Festival C4D file and go Edit, Edit Original. That opens up Cinema 4D Lite with that file in there. Go back to After Effects and do the same thing with the Multi-Pass Layer C4D file. Select it, go Edit, Edit Original. Go back to After Effects. I'm having you do that because we're going to look at the structure of those files inside Cinema 4D Lite to see how they work with Cineware. So inside the Balloon Festival here, I'm going to select the Balloon Festival file. I'm going to take a look at the Cineware effect up here in the Effect Controls panel. We'll just run down here from top to bottom. There's the Show Help button, which we'll just skip for now. Then there's the Render Settings. And the top thing is the Renderer. The fastest render is Software. You're looking at that now, which kind of looks like what you'd see if you're working inside Cinema 4D. There are three display options for the software renderer. Under display here, got the current shading, which is the default view. Wireframe looks like that. And then there's the box. Now the box setting is obviously the fastest. It's easy just to drag right through there and see the basic structure of this Cinema 4D animation and file. You change over to the wireframe. It's slower, surprisingly a lot slower, but there's a lot going on here because of all the detail there and then back to the default view of the current shading. There are two other renderers. Both of them are called standard, draft and final. Now in this case, you won't see much difference. I'll go to draft. It looks a little sharper now. But take a look at the edges here along the A and the S. That's called aliasing, the kind of stair-step look. If you switch over to standard, the stair-step look will smooth out. Not perfectly, but it'll smooth out. But that's just a small part of the difference between standard and draft. I'll show you a larger collection of differences down here in these two different comps there. So I'll go to this first one, Multipass Layers Final. What I've done here is taken this Multipass Layers C4D file, and I've split it up into some constituent parts. The constituent parts are part of the Multipass rendering. They're not objects like the text or the cube or the sphere or the cone. They are rendering elements. And those are the things that are differentiated between the draft and the final view. I'll click on these guys now, and you'll see what I mean. I've got this one set to Standard Final. And if I take a look at these guys individually by soloing them, you can see the various elements. This is the atmosphere, refraction, reflection. Go to ambient occlusion, it's called. Kind of like shading. There's a real shadow there. Specular, that's the highlights off of the images and the text and the shapes. Diffuse is kind of this general color for the whole thing without any extra texturing. And one more thing down here, the matte for the cube. Those guys are all visible when you're looking at the standard final view. But if I go to the draft view over here, which is the same collection of rendering elements, those all won't be there. There'll be atmosphere, that's fine. But then go down to refraction, it doesn't show up. It does not display in the draft mode. Neither does reflection, neither does occlusion. But then the rest of them do show up here. Shadow shows up and the rest of these guys show up there. So that's the difference between draft and final. Let's go back to the balloon festival here. These other three guys, these checkboxes here, texture shader, pre-calc, textures and RAM, these things help you render faster, but you want to uncheck them when you want to do the final render. No texture shader is turned off because there aren't any textures or shaders inside this particular file. Apply to all means that if you have multiple instances of Cineware in the same comp, then you have the same settings for all, which means that it'll render faster throughout that comp. Going down a little bit farther here, project settings for the camera. You can choose the camera. Now, when you work inside a Cinema 4D file, sometimes you have more than one camera, but you have the default camera that is displayed when you then render that file out. But you can view different cameras in there here inside After Effects if there were multiple cameras. If that's the case, you go down here to select one and then click on Set Camera and then select from the group here in this drop-down list. In this case, there's only one. Go back here. The really cool part of this for me is that you can use the comp camera instead of the Cinema 4D camera. If you have a comp camera that you've animated or want to animate, you can replace the Cinema 4D camera with the comp camera. You can choose centered comp to kind of have a good starting place to make it easy to kind of figure out where the camera is. Or you can take the current comp camera settings wherever they are and just turn that on. It's pretty slick that you can use an After Effects camera inside a Cinema 4D file and watch it render right here in real time. We'll go back to the Cinema 4D camera there. 
Now here it says Cinema 4D Layers. Well, there aren't any layers here in this particular file, and you're probably thinking, what? How can that be? I mean, there's this little object here, there's text, there's this, there's that. They all should be layers, right? Well, layers in Cinema 4D don't work like layers inside After Effects. Let me switch over to these two multipass guys. And if I look at these guys and click at the top layer, you see that, oh, there is a checkbox for layers. So what's the difference? You can see that back over in Cinema 4D Lite. So switch back to that. Layers are groups of objects, and they're just an organizational thing. So in this particular project, the objects are organized into layers. You can tell by the color swatches that there are four layers here. You can see the layers down here on the right, right there, under Attributes, there's a tab for Layers. Click on that. There's the Layers panel. It's just an organizational thing. You can turn them on and off, pretty much like you can turn off a layer group in Photoshop, for example. Those are all groups of objects or groups of elements here inside this file which can be very helpful when you're working on these guys inside After Effects. I'll show you what I mean. We'll go back to After Effects. If you select the original file, for example, click on this Cinema 4D Layers, and you can select a layer and say Set a Layer. You can pick the layer or layers that you want, and then that layer or those layers then show up down here. I separated out just the text layer. So I'll click it to make it visible. And it'll look a little bit duller just because of the way it works, because we don't have the rest of the things applied to it, just the text. So now that it's separated out, I can apply effects to it, for example. So I can scroll on down here and apply glow to it if I want to do that. Or I can apply curves to it to brighten it up and maybe affect the color a bit. In any event, this ability to separate out layers is really helpful inside After Effects. I can also put layers in between this. I can separate out the various layers from a C4D file and then put other layers of my own creation in between them. So that's a really clever little extra feature there. I'll turn off that eyeball there because we're going to work on something else here. All right, we'll go back to Balloon Festival again for the time being. So we can't set layers here because there aren't any layers here. Let's move on down to Multipass. Multipass is that thing I mentioned before in terms of how it's rendered. By default, they're unchecked. But when you check them, you can either select a Multipass file or select all of them. So under Set Multipass here, you're given a list of all the possibilities. But only one applies to this particular file, that's Screen Mask. That's the only Multipass element included in the renderer for this file. So if I click on one of these guys and pick the wrong one, let's say pick something that doesn't really exist, like Atmosphere here, it's just nothing going on there, so it just becomes this black screen. I'll Control or Command Z to undo that. But let's just take a look at the multi-pass layers over here. By the way, the only way you can see the multi-pass options are if you're in one of these two standard modes here, standard final or standard draft. If you're in software, you won't see that option. All right now we have the option of saying, okay, multi-pass here. I could select multi-pass by clicking on that and selecting from here. Again, I need to know which ones are actually present. Some of them aren't. Cancel. Or I can click on this and say Add Image Layers. So I'll do that on this last one. This one's just the original file there. Right now it's set up the software. I'll change it to Draft. And now I'll go down here. I'll say Add Image Layers. I'll turn this on as well because I need to switch that on. Add Image Layers. And it'll add only the ones that really are included in the rendering. There they are. Get a little message here. There's some post effects, but we'll close that. And there are all the various multi-pass elements we saw in that other comp, like reflection and refraction. That's how you split them out. And when you do this, it's really helpful. I'll go back to this final here, and we'll take a look at atmosphere, for example. It may be a little bit over the top, maybe too bright. So I'll press T for opacity, and turn that down a little bit, kind of tone it down just a bit. On the other hand, I kind of like the reflection look. Let me solo that for a second. Kind of cool looking. I'd like to boost that a bit. So I'll just duplicate reflection. Control or Command D, duplicate it, and now it's pretty cool. Turn that off for a second. It was that before, and now it's that. So the fact that you can break out these multi pass rendering elements allows you to have more control over your final view here inside After Effects. That's pretty slick. We'll go on down a little bit further now to commands. If I had a camera in this comp, I could merge that camera into Cinema 4D. Is that slick? I could take the camera that I created inside a comp. I could merge that into the Cinema 4D file, no matter how many other cameras are already there. That's pretty slick. And I can also extract Cinema 4D scene data, meaning lights and cameras. I'll go to this guy here. We'll undo the work we did over here. And I'll scroll on down here like this. And I'll say extract the Cinema 4D scene data. And that gives me the three lights and the camera, which allows me to control them here as well. So the Cineware effect is more than just a basic connection between the C4D file in your comp and the CineRender Cinema 4D rendering engine. It has all sorts of options that help you improve the quality of your comp.